The Great Falling Away, as mentioned in the book of, well, it's mentioned in both 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, but we're only going to be looking at 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2, and I'm going to read for you, and I'm just going to read just a little bit, and I'm going to read verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except a falling away come first, and a man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. First thing I need to tell you about this is that that day being spoken of here is the day of the Lord. In scripture, most of the time when you read that day, it's speaking about that fearful, that awesome, that great, that day of the Lord. Now, that day, the day of the Lord, refers to a lot of different periods and a lot of different times in scriptures. The prophets of the Old Testament used it to speak about the final judgment at the end. It's used in a, the day of the Lord is used in a lot of things. Some people will say that Jesus Christ is Lord of the Sabbath and that the day of the Lord is the Sabbath. That would be another good way of using it. The Sunday church going people would tell you that the day of the Lord became synonymous with Jesus because Jesus kept appearing in the New Testament after he died and he resurrected. He kept appearing to the disciples on a Sunday materially, physically appearing to them. And so they would hold that Sunday became the day of the Lord because it was the day of the Lord's appearing consistently. And so we have a lot. The millennial reign is also considered the day of the Lord. The tribulation, the last three and a half years of the great tribulation is also referred to as the day of the Lord because it's the time of the Lord's anger. And equally at the end when the fervent he and the earth melts, that is also and the final judgment is also the day of the Lord. So the first thing I need to get you into is the day of the Lord means a whole lot of things. And so if your end time theology is not sharp, I don't even recommend you begin looking at what this verse is speaking and definitely don't make any scriptural points about it because there's a lot in this verse. But let's have a look at the context. Why is this book being written? First and second Thessalonians are being written because there's someone that's come along and have told them that you are in the day of the Lord, that you are going to go through the great tribulation, that you have missed the rapture and that you are in a great deal of trouble if you don't believe me let me read it from the beginning of this chapter and let me just add a couple of bits to it as i'm reading i'm not going to add a lot but just listen to what i say and what i add on to it as you follow the words on the screen now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our lord jesus christ and our gathering together unto him speaking of the rapture us being gathered together unto him in the clouds that you not be shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by a letter from us, because the day of Christ, the rapture, our gathering together to him, where we will meet with him in the clouds, where we'll be with him in the sky, is at hand. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means for that day, speaking not of the day of Christ, as mentioned previously, but speaking about the day of the Lord, that great and fearful day, shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition stop and so here we speak about that man this man of sin being revealed the, the son of perdition and so it's quite clearly a reference here that there will be a falling away but it'll be a falling away after the church age dealing with israel and it's speaking about the man of sin being revealed. I'm only throwing it out there because this is always thrown in the mix. But end time people's, people's end time theology is so wrong a lot of the time that this verse is used all over the place to prove a lot of things. In fact, if you really want an interesting read about this verse, um, that falling away mentioned might be synonymous with two things. It might be synonymous with the church being snatched away to meet Christ in the clouds being the falling away or the departing of the church because this word falling away could also mean the departure or departing from the faith being taken up to the clouds to be with Christ in person no longer having to live by faith but seeing him face to face this is a one way of a departing or it could speak of the end times obviously mentioned all over the place such as Matthew 24 and 25 about in the last days that many will depart from the faith having their hearts grow cold, the love of many will grow cold, falling into deception with all the false teachers and perdition going on. We know that there will be people that fall away from the faith in the last days because of deception. And so I'm just going to use this to say 
just what I've said here, just so you have a clearer understanding of what this scripture is speaking about. But like I say, this verse requires a good understanding of the end times and of the context of the book of first and second Thessalonica to get the context for the book. Listen.